สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome ladies and gentlemen Welcome back to City Decoding and Transformation You're still with me Guitar s a r u d a t u s i as your host and we're very pleased to welcome our next guest speaker that would come up here and share with us a lot of fruitful information here and I think he's ready and all the way from Manchester Welcome สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ Thank you uh, very much for inviting me to speak with you today It's uh, a real honor to uh, share Some of the work that we've been doing uh, as a business at Broadway Malian, and, and also talk a little bit about some of the research and some of the success success factors that we've established uh, around uh, recovery in town c e n t e r s and city c e n t e r s and an urban cause generally. So I've got a, a set of slides that I'll chat through today, and these will. Hopefully, help to to illustrate uh, some some of that thinking and uh, show you some examples of, of some of the projects that we are working on in this in this area as well. So, but first of all, uh, a little bit about myself and uh, Brody Malian, of course. So, uh, Brody Malian are a a global collective of uh, creatives, architects, urban designers, master planners, uh, landscape architects, interior designers. Um, the business is a, a, an employee-owned trust. It's a, it's a 60 year old established design consultancy, and um, has studios around the world, and a, a really good uh, ethos of collaboration internally. So we we talk a lot with our colleagues in different places in the world, and, and we we share information and, and solutions uh, with each other, uh, and we find that that's a, a really positive way of uh, of assisting our clients. Uh, with with their uh, projects and and, and uh, some of their problems, so um, myself, I'm director of urbanism uh, for b r o a d w a y Malian. I'm based in the Manchester studio, so Manchester is a, a, a second city in in UK, and I work all over uh, the UK and and world. s um, I am a qualified landscape architect, and I am also urban designer and, and master planner. Uh, Practising for 20 y e a r s I joined b r o a d w a y Malian just over 10 y e a r s ago. Uh, I'm also a High Street Task Force placemaking expert, and the High Street Task Force is a, a government uh, o r g a n i z a t i o n uh, that helps local authorities, so councils, uh, to um, regenerate their their town centres. I'm very much a, a passionate placemaker. Uh, and, and I'm a champion of Broadway Malian's uh, place team, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, my client base tends to be public sector, public sector, so a lot of work with councils and, and local authorities and governments. Uh, although I, I also work on on the bigger uh, private development uh, scheme, so often an interest in interface between public sector and private sector, between the, the strategic and aspirational thinking and the, and the technical and, and, and kind of realities of delivery. So it can, can be quite an interesting place to be. And, and my particular expertise is around city cores, urban realms, uh, and that includes streets and parks and squares and such like. So I'm just going to minimize this window. Okay. So um, yes, what what do we think successful places are all about? Well, uh, I suppose they're they're about uh, communities, really. They're, they're, they need to be the life and and soul of communities. And it's about bringing together different aspects of that town and city c e n t e r So uh, beyond the retail consideration of, uh, of residential and, and artistic and, and social uh, and civic facets and activities, uh, spaces and places that are sustainable and healthy, uh, places that are attractive and walkable and, and diverse and, and distinct. Um, we like to promote uh, flexibility. So places that can ebb and flow uh, as situations change, uh, but always thinking about creating places that have people at, at the very heart uh, of the thinking. Um, we we use uh, a lot of evidence based research uh, as well as uh, traditional uh, place uh, appraisal to to understand our uh, projects and and to uh, use that information to start to uh, derive. Um, uh, development briefs for projects. Uh, we, we very much promote a, an integrated approach to place making, and we have a particular ability to bring together specialists internally from our own Broadway Malian team, but also externally 
to to really create bespoke teams that can deal with quite complex problems. And we, we very much promote um, uh, place and, and place making, as I've said. And you know, this, there's a number of components to to this that we we um, we think are important. Uh, and we'll touch on these a number of times uh, on and off through the, through the course of, of this presentation. But it's about health and well-being. It's about connecting places, providing um, uh, work opportunities. Uh, it's about sustainability and reusing and repurposing existing facilities. It's about creating resilience in, in city centres and, and town centres. It's about championing culture and, and heritage. Uh, it's about looking at people first places and all of that coming together to, to hopefully create authentic communities. So we see three key uh, drivers around place and, and our projects, uh, and these can be broadly divided, I guess, into the, these three um, uh, themes here. So we think a lot about urban centre regeneration, and that's you know looking at how uh, we can reimagine the, the physical and the, the social cultural identities of places. Um, we, we very much uh, bring together, as I mentioned before, this collaborative approach, specialists to help with that. Um, we also uh, work very closely with government institutions such as uh, High Street Task Force. And uh, I think what's important to that regeneration piece is that you know, PPP, public-private partnership is, is absolutely key to success. Uh, it needs that different set of skills that the different parties bring uh, in order to uh, enable delivery of these complex projects. Resilient places, you know, this is all about uh, responding to climate emergencies, use of brownfield lands, uh, sustainable development wherever uh, possible. So leading your projects with carbon neutrality and green infrastructure. And I, I can show you a little bit about a project we've worked on recently on that. Uh, it's about creating streets for all. Uh, it's about transit-oriented development, transit-oriented communities, which I think the next speaker Ed uh, will talk a little bit about. Uh, and finally, it's about, uh, well, perhaps finally, but for me, most importantly, people focus growth. We're very passionate about social value in our work, uh, as well as environmental value and economic value. Uh, but we find that this is very very important to success of a project. So thinking about engagement and consultation and, and what we call co-design, so working with the public to actually design together a scheme, uh, using uh, big data to help us understand local needs, uh, uh, not just assuming that we know the answer, and creating opportunities for inclusive success. So ensuring that nobody's left behind, promoting circular economy principles and inclusive community wealth generation in our projects as well. So uh, a few examples of projects that I am working on or have worked on quite recently that are around this topic, I suppose, of town centres. Uh, this is uh, Snow Hill Public Realm scheme, which is a, a large quarter of Birmingham city centre, so a third city in, in UK. Uh, this is the financial district. Uh, currently, uh, um, um, although this is this image you can see on the left hand side is of a project recently completed, uh, large areas of the of the business district currently are dominated by traffic. Uh, part of the recovery plan, COVID recovery plan for Birmingham, has been to implement more equitable approach to street design, uh, um, promoting. Uh, pedestrian and cycle access over vehicle access, creating spaces for businesses to spill out of, uh, improving that health and quality of life, places for communities to come together, uh, and obviously dealing with issues of climate change through green infrastructure uh, and uh, ultimately kind of stimulating economic growth in, in the Snow Hill area. Uh, so we, we've taken this through strategic design and now projects are being delivered on the ground, which is very exciting. Also in central Birmingham, uh, a project which I'll talk a little bit to uh, later, which is uh, going green, uh, a green infrastructure plan, which is uh, it's really about encouraging green planning and design. It's about enhancing uh, biodiversity, 
Uh, it's about greening the streets, encouraging people back to the city through uh, attractive environments that they uh, feel safe and uh, want to visit. Uh, we do a number of different projects in urban centres. Um, this one is in a, uh, an urban centre just outside of Manchester called Rochdale. And it, it's, uh, it looks to create a vision for Rochdale that is, um, it is unique and is, is distinctive. It's about cultivating communities. It's about promoting a healthy town, but also a healthy planet. Uh, it's about really um, an evolution in the, in the cultural offer that's uh, currently in, in Rochdale. And it's about promoting making uh, something that's quite special and distinct to Rochdale. City Park in, in central Chester, uh, the historic town of Chester. So a catalyst project for regeneration in the, in the city core, uh, unlocking uh, regeneration through investment from uh, public sector and uh, really reimagining what spaces can be. So this used to be surface car parking. Uh, it's now a community uh, facility where activities and events can, can take place. Um, Transit-oriented community. Uh, again, in, in northern Manchester, I won't talk too much to this because I believe this is uh, Ed's topic, but, you know, thinking how transit is core to uh, urban, urban centres, um, really um, uh, interesting way of uh, adding footfall through residential developments, uh, but, but really promoting a, a mixed use community 15 minute neighbourhoods uh, approach. Uh, in Southport, we're looking at uh, retail loops and leisure loops and, and cultural loops. How do people move? How can we improve those pedestrian and cycle links? How can we downgrade the traffic, um, which causes real severance? How can we create what's something that is a, a classically cool place? Uh, slightly dis different, but looking at a more strategic urban uh, project, this is uh, a neighbourhood appraisal, so uh, an, a number of sites which are owned by the uh, local governments, how can they get best value from those um, sites from a place perspective? So residential, yes, but also what else, what other amenities can be included within these developments to start to join the dots across a borough uh, and, and make uh, really positive and sustainable 15-minute uh, neighbourhoods uh, that connect and, and add value across a place. Uh, we do a lot of work in, in urban centres around university projects as well. This is a, a new uh, urban park for uh, the University of, of Coventry. Uh, again, a really big part of their recovery process. So uh, responding to that demand for, for outdoor and, and green spaces where people can walk and, and enjoy um, uh, exter external environments, but in hard urban areas where they can safely meet friends and family. It's an inclusive place. It's not just for students. It's part of the city, uh, a place for uh, all citizens to, to come together. Uh, and then last couple of projects, finally, um, a project that we, we won the RIBA People's Award for. Uh, a huge project in, in Birmingham, again, actually, this one, Centenary Square. Uh, a complex project to uh, really bring together a number of different facilities around the, the new library, <clears throat> some council buildings, uh, so, some memorial and, and heritage buildings as well, uh, and a catalyst project really for regeneration in this area. And then finally, a project that Ed and myself worked on. <clears throat> this is the 11 Parks project in Abu Dhabi. It, it's it's you know, a really fantastic scheme where the municipality of Abu Dhabi were looking at how the role that parks play in their uh, in the municipality, in their city environments, uh, a, re a review uh, and a revamp of all of these parks to create spaces that were much more attuned to uh, 21st century communities, uh, allowing those communities to come together, providing uh, the right uh, shade conditions and, and uh, places for, uh, for play. Uh, all these projects were, were branded actually beautifully by Ed's team. Uh, and so, uh, you know, creating a really modern um, set of um, uh, facilities in, in the heart of, uh, of urban Abu Dhabi. So uh, a number of projects there, which uh, I'm, I'm involved with currently. Um, a couple of 
uh, pieces here around our research into uh, high streets, uh, that place within, within your town or your city where uh, activities happen. Um, there has been um, a, a lot of change in, in those environments over the years. And as part of the, of the work that we do is to really look at what those, those trends and, and influences are in, in those environments to see you know, what we can learn and, and how we can apply uh, design in the built environment to really stimulate and, and encourage change. Uh, prosperity and such like. So I'll talk through these six uh, key trends and, and influences that we've been uh, uh, that we've been looking at. So the first is about um, retail and, and how retail is changing. Now, high street footfall is is falling uh, in lots and lots of different places around uh, the UK, but also you know around the world. Uh, what's interesting is that High Street Task Force have done some research and found that it, it's not universal. Actually, certain places um, seem to be uh, doing better than, than others. And so there's, there's a number of lessons that can be learned about how best to optimise the right uh, type and mix of, of retailers uh, and uses. So most certainly town centres need to adapt to you know, changing lifestyles and technologies, much more people shopping online. So what does that mean for your physical store? You know, do you become a place where it's about touching and feeling quality uh, and, and, um, or, or, or other aspects of, of retail rather than just the purchase and the exchange? Um, thinking about shopping locally, the um, a big, big move through COVID has, has been people staying closer to their neighbourhoods. Uh, they're making um, purchases 24-7. Uh, so, you know, how, how can your place, your town respond to some of that? Uh, cost, consumer priorities changing, so away from that, uh, that, that pure purchase into much more of, a, of an experiential exchange. Uh, and, and a much more, a much higher awareness of, uh, provenance. So where does where does the product come from? Is it ethical? Is it is it sustainable? Um, a rejection generally around what we call clone town. So lots of uh, uh, of, of, of common uh, brands uh, that you might see in your town centre towards something that's much more unique and, and exclusive, and and that's really supporting you know independent traders uh, and a move to support local retailers as well and, and that helps to reinforce local identity and distinctiveness uh, and supports you know, local economic development so although that's been a bit of a trend through covid and we see that continuing we see that um, uh, be, being a being something that's um, a reference point for future work certainly uh, a strengthening around foods food culture uh, so a move away from pure retail, much more F&B, but also leisure and entertainment and, and community as well. So residential, uh, helping to drive communities and, and footfall. And then um, uh, the, the, the kind of rise of, of making. So uh, both people doing this as, as a leisure activity, as a hobby, uh, but also uh, a startup and, and incubator businesses. Uh, it's definitely a popular thing we're seeing in retail environments. So healthy places, uh, towns and cities that really uh, promote health and well-being. You know, individuals are becoming much more attuned to this, to the importance of it, uh, and they're looking for it in their uh, in their um, towns and, and places that they visit and, and spend their money. So, you know, some interesting statistics, 75% uh, of, of our health uh, is dependent on the, in the environments in which we grow and develop. And, you know, so creating places that, um, uh, that have natural, positive natural environments and uh, opportunities for social interaction uh, really help us to be healthy. And, you know, as I said, that the awareness of that's on the rise. So people are uh, making decisions with their feet uh, and they're supporting um, places that, that, that have that opportunity. So the creation of walkable environments, uh, places that cater for all age groups and abilities, really, really important. Uh, we're working on a project called Streets for All, which is very similar to uh, TFL's Healthy Streets and a bit more about that um, later. Uh, but they're projects that really promote that, um, that approach. Uh, urban greening, uh, again, really, really important. Uh, and um, 
you know, buffering of noise and, and negative uh, aspects of the built environment to promote healthy environments, really, really positive. Um, okay, tackling climate change, obviously, is at the top of everybody's agendas. Uh, declarations of climate emergencies by many local governments and municipalities. Uh, an understanding, I think, of how built environment and, and transport uh, contributes to emissions. And so, you know, again, it's about looking at, at what we can do and what you should do within your um, town centres to really assist with climate change. So prioritising retrofit and adaptive reuse of uh, buildings over demolition and, and new builds. Uh, circular economy principles, reducing waste and sharing and renting and uh, thinking about recycling and repairing, really promoting uh, local food production and local produce and, and goods um, uh, and such like to help with your uh, town centres. Uh, complete communities. So this is you know, a concept that's about meeting the needs of, of communities. Um, I think it transfers nicely into towns and cities. Uh, because it's about thinking, um, getting people out of their cars, uh, promoting uh, walking and, and cycling uh, in order to um, access those, uh, those amenities. It's, uh, so thinking about that, making sure that your mix of uses and amenities can support that uh, in, in the place that, you are, uh, that you're looking at. Uh, it's uh, a recognition of third places. So I've got a little bit in here about third places as well, another piece of research that we've looked at, and this is uh, in order to combat urban loneliness. So promoting social interaction through, um, through establishment of third place. And by third place, I mean, so first place is where you live, second place is where you work or you, where you school, third place is where you come together as a community, it's where you play, where you have fun. Um, Lots of things being accelerated by COVID around, you know, communities. So um, working from home, hybrid working, co-living, uh, this, this blurring of live, work and play and the ecosystems. Uh, really important to take that into consideration. Uh, number five is around how people move. Uh, so that's changed dramatically over the, the last few years as, as, as our uh, as where we work and learn and play and shop has changed as well. So mobility absolutely at the heart of successful places. Um, really important to balance the tension between people and vehicles. Often uh, our towns and cities are dominated by vehicles, creating severance and congestion and unpleasant environments, poor air quality. You know, we want to promote active travel, uh, which is exercising while you, uh, while you are on the move to somewhere to work or to school. Uh, we want to create safe environments where uh, everybody can walk, all, all ages, all genders. Um, we, uh, we, we want to um, really, one should be promoting um, new technologies, uh, so ride hailing and e-bikes and e-scooters. E um, and also thinking about multimodal journeys. So, you know, maybe uh, somebody will go uh, on a bike uh, and then they'll want to get onto a train and then they want to do something else. So that, that multimodal journey and the interchange uh, between those is really important. So uh, we're looking at a number of schemes around mobility hubs at the moment where uh, that brings together some of that, but also um, distribution around last mile solutions, uh, bike hires, Amazon lockers, but also flexible working spaces as well. So, you know, really quite complex um, more like community hubs, really, rather than mobility hubs. Uh, and then the final move that we're seeing a lot of is uh, DIY urbanism and, and meanwhile use. It's a really great way of um, trying before you buy. So short term, low cost, scalable interventions that are used to catalyze longer term change. It's a way of testing ideas and iterating those ideas. It's a way of bringing communities into thinking uh, about what some of this change might be and also um, uh, really starting to bring communities together. So embedding local support and building consensus, getting local people to work together and identifying what local needs are and, re and responding to those. So uh, a really great move, I think, in towns and cities around, uh, around this. 
So uh, another piece of so that's kind of trends, um, and this is a project uh, in a way that is a research project that also um, responds to you know that trend um, in uh, around sustainability, uh, but also around recovery. Our brief for this was to assist with the uh, COVID recovery within the town centre, but also assist with uh, providing sustainability benefits uh, through the installation of green infrastructure in the urban core of Birmingham. So uh, we were appointed by a, uh, a bid, which is a business improvement district, actually two bids. So the, uh, the retail bid, which managed the central core of uh, retail in Birmingham, but also the a Colmore Business District bid, who are uh, who, who manage the business district. Uh, the bid's role is to uh, to gather monies, uh, which is paid uh, through a levy on uh, on the building uh, that uh, that the uh, landlords own, and that money is used to improve the environment around. Uh, those buildings and, and, and so it's an investment by the people that are that own those buildings in in their environment and uh, so the uh, the bids raised some capital in order to uh, undertake this this project which was uh, looking at, at green infrastructure and we we initially looked at you know what some of the issues were so um, you know a number of challenges affecting Birmingham, COVID obviously has a massive effect. So in a slow release of restrictions by governments, employees and, and visitor confidence really knocked in returning to the inner, inner city. Uh, and so the ability to trade uh, affected. Uh, and the decline of high streets and, and UK retail environments, which has been ongoing for years, but massively accelerated by lockdowns and restrictions. Uh, in the UK, the exit from uh, the European Union, Brexit, has impacted on trade, freedom of movement, and so has, has been a big, a big issue. Uh, and climate change, obviously, how, how that's impacting all of our lives, it's quite terrifying, really. And, you know, so what we can do about worldwide loss of biodiversity and uh, natural habitats, um, something that's, that's part of this project. And then health and well-being. So uh, Birmingham's residents and visitors, you know, how are they affected by air and noise and pollution and climate change and inactivity and diet and lack of access to green space? You know, all of those issues coming together in this one project where we really wanted to promote green infrastructure and demonstrate the benefits that it has in, um, in, in addressing some of those global challenges, uh, but also importantly, reinstating the status of the city as a driver for commercial, creative, scientific, political, and cultural life. So now we said is the time to build back responsibly and sustainably. We did a lot of diagnosis of the place, so using data and physically walking around to understand what some of the key issues were. And given the time, I won't go into these in much detail today, but uh, very, from a heading perspective, very uh, um, similar to other places around the world. So heavily urbanised contexts, very low quality biodiversity in, in any of the green infrastructure that existed, uh, poor connections of those natural assets across uh, the city and, and the, and the um, metropolis, and no coordinated approach to green infrastructure. So we developed a, a toolkit and uh, a very simple user guide, which enabled uh, both uh, private citizens and uh, public sector organizations to work through their project, to understand uh, the opportunities that could be delivered by green infrastructure, to uh, identify the benefits that could be uh, delivered uh, through green infrastructure, and then to help them select uh, specific interventions, green infrastructure interventions that might be uh, suitable for their projects. All of that would then help to uh, establish business case, so the costs of um, and, and the design of a scheme, uh, uh, and then ultimately uh, following funding, uh, a process of delivery through detailed design, uh, implementation, and, the, and then measuring the success. So uh, as a very quick summary here of uh, the different uh, master plans that we, uh, that we established, the frameworks, 
So we looked at how projects might connect into a network. We looked at multifunctionality, so how interventions would deliver benefits in a number of different ways, whether that would be air quality, whether it would be places for people to shelter, whether it would be uh, sustainable urban drainage, whether it would be biodiversity. So um, trying to get more benefit, more value out of your investment. And then finally, we looked at uh, the scale of projects. So depending on where you were in the city, you might want a small, a medium or large scale projects. We developed a, a, an intervention schedule. So this is a, a kind of technical piece that sat at, at the rear of, of, the, um, of the report, but it helps you understand some of the technical considerations, the maintenance, the seasonal benefits, the types of approvals that you might need and the consultation that you might need to do as well. And each of those interventions was, uh, was illustrated. So really helping um, users to um, understand both the, 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 the potential uh, benefits, but also the potential appearance. And they were from very tiny scale interventions here that you can see, which is actually just improving the biodiversity of existing planted areas, which has you know, limited benefits, moving up through to interventions of micro woodlands in streets, uh, starting to deliver much more benefit. Uh, and then ultimately to kind of large scale projects where we're proposing uh, the, the, com the complete change of, of inner city ring roads, uh, vehicle ring roads uh, into uh, city scale uh, um, parks uh, that, that provide huge benefits, uh, create excellent uh, network across green infrastructure uh, uh, and also um, uh, beautiful places to be. So um, I'm probably just going to, looking at time, I'm gonna, I was going to talk about third place as well, which was um, seeding community through, through social interaction. But what I might do is just move on to some of the uh, benefits that we see from, uh, from our project work uh, and an approach uh, that will help you actually deliver success. So I'm just going to bring up this slide here, if that's okay. Let's have a look how we do this. Okay, view full screen mode. So this is a piece of uh, work that we undertook uh, called um, Street Life. So uh, it, it really brings together our experience of, of working in town centres and an approach that uh, will help to, to deliver success. Uh, and it talks to six uh, key uh, themes. Uh, of which if you, if you target these through your projects, uh, uh, we uh, believe you will have a, a successful end project. So the first is around uh, community driven. So this is really uh, you know, co-design at its best. Uh, it's about having an invested local governments uh, and strong leadership, talking to people uh, who are not often heard. So yes, talk to the government, local authority, but also talk to local businesses, talk to local business groups. Vital to talk to young people. They are the future of your, your future customers, uh, your future users. So understanding what they want and need is vital. Uh, and communities generally, you know, it's about local needs. It's about responding to those local needs. So we want to enable that group and empower them and infuse them and, and find actually within that group, your leaders. So those that will really champion the project and, and keep up the momentum, build visions with this group and make those visions shared and sustainable, make them aspirational and, and achievable. Beware of elite projection. So we call this the, the Rochdale test, actually. You know what? Don't go to a place assuming that you know the answer. For me, the problem is that I am a, a white, middle-aged, middle-class man. Uh, so it's, it's, I have to be very careful that I work with our colleagues to understand different viewpoints from different cultures and different genders and different age groups. Um, really use that to, to drive your proposals. Be authentic in what you do. Don't try and copy somewhere else. Try and understand your place. What, is, what makes your town special? You know, what is your DNA? Establish from that an identity and, and use that to instill pride in your place uh, through your citizens. Uh, use big data. So don't um, 
don't assume that you know the answers from just walking about a place. Use data to verify and validate those findings and understand citizen behaviour and the interactions uh, and really reveal uh, patterns and trends that might not be seen uh, with the human eye. But importantly, you know, data is great, but it's, it's not the ends uh, of, the, of, the, um, uh, of the process. It, the process is about being creative. It's very much an art. So, you know, use storytelling to, to sell your place. Uh, think about aggregated places. Uh, so ecosystems, perhaps, rather than anchors that traditionally have been used. So I think a lot of successful places demonstrate clusters of place that come together to drive success. Uh, and it's really about a critical mass of those places. So if you, if you can create that critical mass, you can, you can really create success. And that can be a mix of all sorts of things, homes and workplace, pop-ups, social activity, uh, but also some of those um, activities that you might not uh, usually expect in, in town. So try and bring the unusual and the different in and create a, a center which is, which is livable and, and lively. Uh, be experiential. So a broad range of activities and uses across different hours of the day. Uh, but first think about what you've already got. So audit and repair and reuse, reconnect severed places. Think about what happens in between your buildings. Public realm's absolutely vital to place making. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's the, uh, the place where it's democratized space where anybody can access. You don't need to pay uh, to experience it and to enjoy it. Uh, be Instagrammable. Why aren't people posting pictures of your town centre on Instagram? You know, think about that. Think about why they are doing it elsewhere uh, and, uh, and promote that in your place. Uh, make it playful and fun so children uh, and adults can have, uh, can have fun and, and play in town centres as well. So, uh, you know, don't be too serious. But make it sustainable. Use your town centre to uh, mitigate uh, ch climate change. Uh, be connected. So whether that's physically or socially or, or digitally, but provide spaces for communities to come together and to, and to interact uh, and stimulate curiosity and encourage exploration through uh, interest in public realm and buildings. Uh, really promote pedestrian first, healthy streets in your towns and your cities uh, so that people feel safe to walk and people feel safe to cycle uh, within those. Uh, be seamless in that interchange of public transport. So uh, think about how people get from a, from a bus to a metro uh, to a train. Uh, and uh, promote parks, not car parks. You know, access to city core, core in your car uh, it shouldn't be the default option. And uh, better, more successful, more livable places uh, are realising this, I think, and, and promoting uh, green infrastructure for people rather than uh, parks for cars. Think about blending your physical and your virtual. So. How, how does your um, retail world work on different platforms? How can the two overlap? Uh, how can your town centre actually have a digital presence? How can your uh, curation of that town centre be digital? Uh, and ultimately, I think it's about this. So it's about creating conditions for, for smiling at strangers. If you've got a place where your citizens are civil to each other, uh, I think you've done, you've done very well. Uh, so the final section then is about uh, thinking about change. So delivery is very much just the start. So an ability to adapt and, and diversify is, is very important. Uh, single use spaces, whether these be indoor or outdoor, are obsolete, need to be flexible, multi-use. Think about what you do with your, with your vacancy. Uh, is it possible to have some meanwhile use? Can you add uses into that vacancy? Really important to have a rolling programme of activity and events uh, and to nurture and, and to curate uh, your town and, and your town centre so that um, it, it's successful. It's not a case of just, you know, delivering and then walking away. It needs, it needs constant love and attention. <clears throat> so uh, we think those are the success uh, factors for um, delivering successful uh, town and, and city high street projects. 
Uh, and I hope you found that of interest and been uh, been lovely to uh, present that to you today. So uh, the Street Life report, if you uh, would like a copy of it yourself, uh, you can you can grab that off our off our website. It's available there. <laughs> You did a wonderful presentation, and that was good. A very good managing at your time. <laughs> <laughs> good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes, and and I heard a lot of interesting project here that I also listed out here. Many um, interesting ones that we have our list as well. And you mentioned it during your presentation already. So Excellent. I think it covers it covers all the the, the interesting um, projects. The Snow Hill Public, I was also interested in that one as well. And you mentioned it already, just like you can read my mind. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and you also, you know, gave a lot of um, sharing experience. The key success was already there. So I think it's a good opportunity for, for Thailand as well to hear all that information from your side. So maybe we can adapt or do something to, uh, with that sort of things to Thailand as well. Mm -hmm. I, yes, I think so. it's I think it's transferable. I mean, you know, the situations that we find in the UK, they they they're repeating across the world. So the response to those, I think, is 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 universal to a certain extent. So hopefully, there's some lessons that um, that will be useful in different places around the world. Yes, sure. That that is correctly what what that is definitely why we're having the, this talk together and sharing this information because we want uh, we also want you know your knowledge we want to hear from you the experience the case study so that we can come take it over and adapt to develop you know into Thailand as well for our urban development as well that is the reason why we're having this great conversation and and you know excellent. this presentation together here excellent good well I'm, I'm glad it's been useful I'm glad you enjoyed it yes we're more than happy to have you here with us too thank you all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you had a wonderful time here listening to our guest speakers. And thank you very much for joining us here. And well, from Broadway Miller here, it's not only you that you're going to be joining us. I heard that we have another guest waiting. Well, we're just going to let the audience to stay tuned and don't go anywhere and wait for our next guest speakers. And, you know, maybe watch and see who's going to be to share the information also from Broadmelon here, but in different location because Danny is from Manchester, but well, please stay tuned. I'm not going to tell you that. Well, oh, and I think we're going to see him next coming up next. So please stay tuned with us, ladies and gentlemen, you're here with City Decoding and Transformation. Thank you very much for Danny for joining us here. And yes, of course, our next guest speaker, we're going to stay tuned and we'll see you in our next tip. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Kaukunka. Mm -hmm.